solve the equations, we're going to get into inequalities. And the best part about this first section is that when we solve it, inequalities with adding and subtracting, the rules do not change whatsoever. And whatever you add to one side, you got to add to the other side. Or whatever you subtract from one side, you got to subtract to the other side. And that's what my if then is here. So if, if, if A is greater than B and I add C to both sides, it still stays the same. I still have that greater than symbol. Nothing, nothing changes. My inequality would still be balanced. And you'll notice that as we go through here. So just apply your same rules as equations, except use your inequality sign instead of an equal sign. So for example, this first one. C minus 12 is greater than 65. Well, the inverse is subtracting 12 is adding 12. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So C, and now we bring our sign down, is greater than 77. And it says graph the solution on a number line. Well, we're going to make it nice and easy. So draw yourself a little number line. Put the number that you got right in the middle. Put one number to the left, one number to the right. So I'll go 76 and 78. So now to decide whether I'm going to put an open circle or a closed circle depends on my symbol. In this case, I'm saying just greater than 77. So if I plugged in 77, would this make sense? Is 77 greater than 77? No. So I do not include 77. So I'm just going to put an open circle instead of a closed circle. So the open circle does not include the number. So it's not including 77. If I put the closed circle in there, then I would need, uh, I would have had a closed circle if it would have been like greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. The open circle is for less than or greater than. So the equal to makes me fill in the circle. So in this case, I have an open circle because I'm not including 77. And I'm looking at numbers that are greater, right? C is greater than 77. So numbers that are greater, so my arrow goes to the right. And as long as I have my variable, come first, so C is greater than 77, my symbol should point to where my arrow goes. So for example, if I would have had C or 77 is less than C, it doesn't point where my arrow goes. I'd have to flip it around and keep the open end by C. And now it tells me my arrow is going to the right. So that's the other way to do it. As long as your variable comes first, you can just look at your symbol and you don't have to think too hard. Same thing, even if uh, they get flip-flopped and I got my variable on the right side, it still works. So the inverse of a 23 or a positive 23 is subtracting 23 or a negative 23. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. And 14 minus 23 would give me a negative 9, a 14 plus negative 23. Uh, bring my greater than symbol down, and that's gone. And there's my x. And before I graph, I'd rather you flip it, because then you're not going to mess up your graphs. So I'm going to bring my x out front. I'm going to keep it pointing to my x and negative 9, because now it's easy to read. x is less than negative 9, or numbers that are less than negative 9. So I bring my graph out here with negative 9 in the middle. Number to the left, number to the right, negative 10, negative 8. And I got an open circle, right, because I'm not including nine, or negative 9. So there is no greater than with it. It's just less than. And numbers to the left, right? So whenever I would plug into my equation, so for example, if I look, Negative 10 right here is on my graph, so if I plugged in a negative 10, it should make sense. Yep, negative 10 is less than negative 9, so that works. So here's my answer, my inequality that I solved, and here's my graph. Open circle at negative 9, arrow going to the left. Oh, how about this one? Let's see. I got an n on both sides. What's my rule when I got a variable on both sides? Get it to one side, right? So I'm going to have to subtract this 12n over to the other side, minus 12n. That's gone. I still have a negative 4. Don't forget your symbol in front of your 4 is less than or equal to n, right? 13 minus 12 is 1. 1n. We don't really want write the 1 ever. So just n. And like I said, always flip it. Put your variable first. Open n towards the n. I have my negative 4 over here. So now when we graph... I got negative 4, negative 5 to the left, negative 3 to the right. Now I have a closed circle because if I plugged in a negative 4, it would make sense because negative 4 is greater than or equal to negative 4 because it's equal to. So now I put my circle and I fill it in. I need a closed circle. And I'm saying numbers that are greater than negative 4. So we're going to the right. And it's pointing to the right. 
There we go. We can also write inequalities for story problems. I know in this case, when I read through this, you're going to be like, hey, I don't really need to write an inequality. I can figure this one out. But let's write one anyway, just so we get used to it. Peter wants to buy season passes to two theme parks. If one season pass costs $54.99 and Peter has $100 to spend on both passes, the second pass must cost no more than what amount? So if I think about it, I have the first pass plus the second pass. And it can't cost any more than $100. So what symbol would go in between there? I'm not going to put an equal sign. Because I don't want to. Right? It could cost less than $100. That would be fine. Right? I can afford that. So it could be equal to. Could it be greater than? Could the cost be more than my $100? No. Then I wouldn't have enough money. So my cost would have to be less than $100. Or it could be equal to. I could have exactly enough money. So now I can come up with an inequality. I, I'm sure most of you would have figured out, well, I just subtract the two numbers to figure it out. But if I have my inequality here, now I have it in a nice um, greater than or less than situation. So let's bring down my x, less than or equal to, and we end up with 4501. So that means, put my dollar sign, X would be less than or equal to $45 and one cent. So I can afford a ticket that's $45 and one cent. I can afford a ticket that's $30, $20, anything less than that. So that's why it's nice to have that inequality situation there. So if I would have just wrote 4501, now I'm thinking, oh, that second ticket has to cost that. Well, it doesn't have to, right? My ticket could have been 30 bucks and I'd still be fine. So it's better to have an inequality to represent that situation because one answer doesn't apply. All right, there you go. Like I said, use your same inverse operation rules like you did for equations, except you just have inequality symbols.